In this video, we are going to recreate these animated benchmark graphs, which Apple includes on its product pages for new Apple Silicon products. Here's a quick demo of the version we're going to build. So when the page loads, you can see that the graphs nicely animate in, and they have also this nice gradient effect as well. And as we scroll down, the graphs animate in as we scroll past them. So to get started, go ahead and download the starter code using the link in the description down below. Make sure to run npm install to get all the dependencies. And with that, let's jump in. Here we have the starter code for the project. As you can see, it's just a blank one page website built using Next.js and styled with Tailwind. A couple of highlights that I just want to mention from the starter code before we jump in. The first is I've already gone ahead in this database folder and added some of the benchmark data already for us. So this includes some custom types you can see at the top, which includes the title for each of the types of benchmarks, the different data points as well, both the multipliers and the values. And then also gone ahead and already populated the data itself based on some of the data that I saw on the Apple website. The second item I want to call out is in the Tailwind config, I've already gone ahead and defined these gradients that we're going to use. So purple, blue, and the gray gradients based on using just a simple linear gradient. So let's start with scaffolding out the main page structure and the index file. So let me go ahead and just remove the placeholder content for now. And in this main tag, the first thing I'm going to do is add some styling. So we'll say this is flex box, flex column, give it a min height of screen. In the flex, give it a gap of 20. Let's add some padding, vertical padding, 24 units, and horizontal padding, 48. And then let's also give it a background of neutral 800. Now I'm just going to quickly add an H1 tag as well for the header. I'm just going to type in M3 compared to previous MacBook Pro models. Okay, we can't really see that right now because it's a background. So let's do some styling here. Text white. Let's do a font of semi bold. Let's make it a little bit bigger. 6XL. And just to have it wrap properly, I'm going to give it a max width of 24 character. All right, next thing that we want to do is actually to start building the benchmark cards, as I'm going to call them, for each of the types of benchmarks. So, first, let's go ahead and just set up the mapping over the benchmark data, and then we'll create the component for the benchmark card. So, underneath this H1, I'm going to pull in benchmark data, which I'll import from this DB file that I mentioned earlier. We're going to map over the array. And for each element in the array, we're going to return, in this case, a component that we need to create called benchmark card. And we would pass in the benchmark data. Now, this is giving an error because we haven't created this component yet. So let's do that now. So I'm going to create a new folder called components. And inside of here, create a new file called benchmark card.tsx. Create a new component using the Emmet snippet. And then if I hit save on this, I should now be able to auto import the component. Now it's still doing an error because of the properties that I passed into it. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So to quickly go ahead and fix that, we just need to find the props here for the benchmark card. And for that, I'm going to set the type here of the component to react.fc functional component. And for the props, I'll actually pull in the benchmark card data definition from DB file. So let's just go quickly back here. So the benchmark data that we pulled in originally was the actual array of the data. And the benchmark card data is the type of each of the objects in this array. And then we can destructure all of the properties inside of the benchmark card data type. So let's quickly do that now. So the title, M3 data, M2 data, M1 data, and baseline data. So those will become available for us in a second. But now if we go ahead and go back to the index file, we will see here that the error disappeared. And it looks like you just need an extra parentheses here to get rid of this other error. But now the errors have disappeared and we actually see in dark text here, benchmark card. So the mapping is working correctly. We're passing the data in. So now let's go ahead and flesh out this benchmark card component. So for this, I will maintain this div that's currently there. I'm going to add some styles to it first. So we'll use flex, 
flex call and give a gap of 12. Then inside the div, I will add an h2 tag first. And this h2 tag will just take the title. So the titles are pass being passed in, but now let's style them so we can see them. So we'll make this text white, font medium, and let's do text 3XL. Okay, so now we can see these titles. So now we need to actually create the individual graphs for each of the benchmarks in each of these cards. So I'm going to encapsulate that actually in a different component, still in the same file, we can keep it, but we'll call it a benchmark item. So just below here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say const benchmark item. I'm going to say it's a React functional component of a type we need to define equals. And then we'll return some items here. So let's go ahead and first define the props that we'll want this benchmark item to take. So I'll just do that right here. So interface benchmark item props. We'll have it take a title of type string. We'll have it take a multiplier of type string, a value of type number. And we'll also give it a property called color. And this will define what color we want the graph to be essentially. And we'll explicitly say it has to be one of purple or blue or gray or baseline. So this will allow us to strongly type and make sure we get one of these exact values in. So now we'll pass this definition in as the props for the component. And I'll just go ahead and quickly destructure as well. Multiplier value and color. And because we're saying color is optional here, we're going to set a default value here as baseline. All right, so now let's go ahead and start building out this item in more detail. So first thing we're going to do is in this surrounding div, we're going to give it a couple class names. So we're going to set flex, justify, between, item center, and gap six. And then we're going to add a couple of different items in this div. So we'll first do another div. And in this div, we are going to give a class name of flex1, flex, flex call, and gap2. And then inside of this, there's going to be a couple of different items here. The first will be another div, which we'll get to in a second. And I'm also going to add a span. And this span is going to take the title. And then outside of this div here, I'm going to add another span and the contents will be multiplier. And I realize I misspelled multiplier in a couple of places, so let me update that. Okay, to start seeing actually what this content will look like, I'm going to go ahead and pass in an example of one of these components so we can see what it starts to look like. So here underneath this H2, I'm gonna put in a benchmark item component. And for the properties, say title is 14 inch MacBook, Pro with M3. The multiplier is M3 data dot multiplier. The value is M3 data dot value, and the color is purple. Now, when I hit save, let's see what this actually starts to look like here. So we can actually see now for each of these cards, we can see we've integrated now one of these multipliers. So you can see this multiplier is the text all the way on the right. The title here is, in this case, the fact that it's the M3 MacBook Pro. The value and the color are going to be used to draw the actual chart itself in a second. So that's how all this data is flowing down. So let's go back to the benchmark item component and continue our work here. So the first thing that we will do is we will get the actual graph to show up, the actual bar. And that's what this div is going to represent. So in this div, let's go ahead and do a class name. This is going to be dynamic here in a second, so I'm just going to make this a string literal. We'll give it a height of 0.375 rem, round it a full, and then to define the background, we need to do a check on the value of the color property. So we'll say if color is equal to purple, then let's use BG purple gradient. And remember, we defined this in our tailwind config already. Else, if color equals blue, then let's use the BG blue gradient. And then else, if color equals to gray, then let's use BG gray gradient. Else, we'll use BG neutral 400. 
And now we can see because we pass purple in as this color property, you can see now it's pulling the right gradient for the actual chart itself. But now we need to actually set what's the right width of this chart. So for that, we are going to do this in the style tag directly. So I'm going to say style, it's going to say width is, and it's going to string literal value percent. Now you won't see that really change anywhere here. That is because for each of the benchmarks, the M3 data is always going to be set to essentially the longest or 100% value. And just to see that in action, let's go ahead and add a couple more benchmark items here to the card component. So I'm just going to first copy and paste. This will be the M2 data. So we'll have M2 here, M2 here, and then it will be blue instead. Okay, so you can see that show up and you can see the dynamic widths now working here for the different benchmarks. Let's go ahead and add just a couple more as well. So this one will be for the M1 and 13 inch MacBook Pro. Use the M1 data and the color will be gray. Again, you can see the dynamic widths here as well. And then finally, we'll add one more benchmark item. This will be the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Intel Core i7 and it's the baseline. And this will use baseline data. And the color will be, well, we can either say it's baseline explicitly, or if we just remove this property because we've set a default value here of baseline, it will automatically just set it to baseline. And there we have the final benchmark. So now let's go ahead and finish some of the styling here for the benchmark item. So I'm just going to go down here. And so we've done the actual chart itself. Now let's style this text underneath it for the title. So this span, we'll just say class name. And again, we're going to do some dynamic styling here. So I do a string literal, say font medium, and then we'll check for if color equals to baseline, then we'll set the text to be text neutral 400. Else we'll say it will be text white. And this is currently complaining because I did not end it there. And so now what this is going to do is for most of these, it's going to set the text white, except for the baseline, which is this lighter gray color. All right, so now let's go ahead and style this multiplier here on the right, which is down here in the span. And for this, again, it's going to be a dynamic styling. So string literal, we'll set the font size to text 5XL, so width of 32, font medium, and then we'll have to check again the color property and then set the correct color based on that. So if color, if color equals to purple, then we'll do text purple 500. Else, if color equals to blue, we'll do a text blue 500. Else, if color equals to gray, then we'll do a text gray 500. Else, it will be a text neutral 500. So we hit save, and now we can see all of these multipliers get appropriately styled in the correct colors. So we've actually gotten pretty much all the styling done here for these benchmarks. So the final thing that we want to now add are the animations. And there's going to be two sets of animations that we want to do. The first is having the charts grow in horizontally as they load. And the second will be to only load the components in as we scroll down and actually start seeing them on the page. So let's first start with this animation of the charts themselves. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to this div here at the very top, and I'm going to convert this into a motion div. And this is going to be because we're going to set up some of the overall properties for frame or motion. And also we'll end up using this to fade in the whole component as we scroll. So I'm going to say here, we're going to use variance from frame or motion. So I need to tell it which specific properties need to map to the initial state. So we'll say, we'll call this one initial. In this case, because we're going to end up doing things only when they come into view, I'm going to use in this case, the while in view state, and we'll end up just calling it while in view as well. Typically what you might do is you would use initial and then animate. Animate would be for when the component loads. In this case, if we were to do when the component loads, it would be when the page loads and everything would animate in, including things off screen. So doing this while in view, make sure it's only going to animate when it actually comes on screen. A couple of properties we can add for that can be added through something called the viewport property. 
And this will allow us to add a couple of things here. The first thing we can say is we can actually say only execute this animation the first time around. So let's say we scroll down the page and then we scroll past it. If we go back to it, we don't want the animation to trigger again. And then the second thing we can give it is a margin. And in this case, I'm going to give it a margin of negative 200 pixels. This means at what point do we consider this component to be on the page? And then you start the animation. So margin minus 200 means we want it to be not when it comes to the right at the bottom of the page, but you want it to animate when the component, which will be hidden in this case, gets to say around here, around 200 pixels from the bottom. Okay, finally, we need to pass in the actual variance that we're going to want to use. So in this case, let's actually start with the overall card, given we're already here. So uh, we're going to pass in something called card variance, which we're going to define here in a second. And then it's also complaining because it doesn't know what this is. So let's import this from Frame of Motion. So now I'm going to go to the very bottom here, and I'm going to define these card variants. So card variance, and we're going to say here that initially for the entire card, we want the opacity to be zero. And then while in view, what do we want to happen? Well, we want the opacity to go to one and become visible. And I'm also going to find the transition here for this animation. So I'm going to give it a duration of 0.5 seconds. I'm going to pass in this east curve as well. And now you could actually see that the whole thing is fading in. And you can actually see that it's doing the fade in only when we get to the scroll position of the component. And you can see as we scroll up and down, things don't reanimate in. And that's what this once true is giving us. Okay, so we're fitting in the whole component. Now let's go ahead and animate in the actual charts themselves. So for that, I'm going to define another variance object here that will attach. We'll call this the benchmark variance. And here, what I'm going to say is we're we'll given an initial value. So what is the initial state to animate from? We're going to give it scale x of zero, opacity of zero and a transform origin of center left. And we'll get to a second why we have to set this. Let's just quickly define what this in while in view will be. So we'll say scale X is one, opacity is one, and the transition will have a duration of one, and the ease will actually just copy the same ease as up here. Now let's go ahead and attach this to the benchmark item component. So I'm gonna scroll up here, and this is our div here that we are using for the charts. So I'm gonna convert this into a motion div. And I will simply go down here and pass the variance. So variance will be the benchmark variance. And now when I hit save and refresh the page, we can see that these charts now nicely animate in from left to right. Now let's quickly talk for a second about this transform origin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this for a second just so you can see what happens when this is removed. So you see now, if I refresh the page, you can see what the scale, it's a scaling from the middle of each of the components. So it's starting, the scale zero here refers to being positioned near the middle, and as it scales up, it scales up from the middle. So from setting this transform origin now to be on the left side, that's when we're able to have it grow from left to right. With that, we've recreated the animated benchmark graphs. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. And on screen now is another video for you to check out next, and I'll see you in the next video.